I'm going to show you guys how to do some quick physio tests, well just MSK tests, some are provocative tests, some are movement tests to try to figure out or determine if someone has some SI joint dysfunction, that meaning when the joints are stiff. You're going to put one thumb under the PSIS on the one side, the other thumb across on S2 spinous process. You're going to ask the patient to raise their right knee up. What you should see is what just happened there where my thumb went down on that side and then when she puts her foot back down, it goes back up. Do that again on the right and it goes down and it comes back up. Lots of times you're just feeling it more than actually seeing it. So you'll feel it go down and up underneath your fingers. So use, make sure you're using your hand as much as your eyes. If we go to the left side, again, it goes down and it goes up. So that's pretty darn good. That's a good one there. If they move together, so I'm gonna mimic one that was stuck. So get your left. So what would happen, the thumb on the S2 would go with the one un under the PSIS, so they move together. That would mean that side is likely stiff. I check straight leg raise. We're typically used to thinking of the straight leg raise for determining or detecting if someone has neurological involvement um, or radiculopathy, say a disc herniation. Um, but when it's limited in that top end for between 70 and 90 degrees, that's usually, that's when the SI joint's supposed to move. So if it's not, you might detect it. So, and you're really checking one side towards the other. So you'll go as far as they will go and pay attention to how it feels at the end. So she's like easily like 95 to 100. You would go around to the other side, always check the other side and then go up. If someone's stiff on their SI joint, instead of going, so this one goes 100, but if she was stiff, she'd probably only go to about here because she'd only be moving for what her hip can do. She wouldn't be doing that rotation on her pelvis. We know that people's hips can, can internally and externally or internally and externally rotate, but when their SI joint is stiff, often they lose their ability to internally rotate passively. You have to keep the knee over the hip, and when you rotate, just go as far as you feel that first barrier, um, and watch that they don't, if they're stiff and you keep going, they're gonna hike there on their hip to make up for it. So just watch that they're not compensating there. Normal is about 25 degrees, um, but you would check the one side, and then go around and check the other. If it's limited, it's usually missing like at least half of the range compared to the opposite or asymptomatic side. The other one I'll do, I'll just show from this side since I'm already here, would be the hip scour test, which is typically for checking like the integrity of that joint surface, like if they have internal derangement in the hip. You'll also pick up if someone has a functional impingement. So if their SI joint, say, is rotated forward and that acetabulum is pointing downward, they're gonna functionally impinge on the edge of that acetabulum. So you bring that hip up, all the way up kind of towards the shoulder and all the way around. And you're going to see, like, does it basically roll smooth in the socket? If they have an SI joint function and that acetabulum is pointed downward or upward, they'll often, you, you often will be restricted trying to get them across midline and they won't do it. And it'll often hurt, like it catches and they don't like it. So I do one side and again, you would do the other usually walking around to that side, but moving up and then bring it over to the opposite shoulder and down. Okay. The other one that I will check will be the pubic symphysis or the pubic shear test. Um, it's a provocative test. So I'm not checking for range of motion. I'm just checking for pain. Basically what I do is I take the heel, the way the test is supposed to be done is you're supposed to shear simultaneously in opposite directions with the pubic ramus. I will usually do that, but then I'll often just go up on the one side, up or a cranial force on the opposite side, and then do caudal and caudal. And the side of the dysfunction will usually be sore because it's like sensitized. It's not really inflamed. It's like a sensitivity. So you would just push. So if you were going to do them together, you would push an equal opposite forces, ask the patient if it hurts, any pain. I will reverse, do it the other way. So I'm pushing up on the other side and down on the other. Ask if they have pain, if there's still no pain. Then I would just go up on the one side, still no pain. Up on the other side, still no pain. 
and down on the one and down on the end. And you'd be surprised, like one side will be potentially very sore if the SI joints are stiff and the other side will be perfectly fine. The only time you'll get both sides hurting is if they have diastasis pubis or if they have osteitis pubis because we've got a true inflammatory reaction happening right at that joint and they don't like any shearing in any direction just because it's inflamed. I will check their respiratory diaphragm to see if they have trigger points in the respiratory diaphragm. We all know that your respiratory diaphragm is like the top part of the piston, your pelvic floor is the bottom part. So often that respiratory diaphragm is mimicking the pelvic diaphragm. So if you have tension in the pelvic floor, chances are they're gonna have it up in the respiratory diaphragm as well. So in order to check that, you're just gonna go right along that costal margin. You're gonna go right up and under. Um, and so I'm gonna actually turn Nikki this way just so that you guys can see this a bit better. I would do it with her laying on her back, but just so that you can see, do you mind if I raise this up a little bit? So then you come right up and under here and you would push up and under. And you should be able to get up and under without any protective guarding. If they're tight, you'll be trying to push and you're like this instead of being able to get up and under that respiratory diaphragm. So go back onto your back there. So often what we'll find, they're often not too bad down on the bottom kind of costal margin. It's usually more towards the sternum and in that upper third, but it absolutely can go right along the whole one side. The other thing that we'll do is we'll often check, we'll do um, Carnet sign when we're trying to figure out if it is actually a visceral problem or a muscular problem for their abdominal pain. So what you would do is you would palpate along, typically along rectus abdominis, but you could be on the obliques, but for sure rectus abdominis. You would find what you think or suspect might be a trigger point, but if you're not sure if it's it in the muscle or the viscera underneath, you just palpate the trigger point, it'll elicit a bit of um, discomfort in there. And then you would ask them to curl their chin towards their chest and curl up into a little bit of an ab crunch. So you try that. Does that make the pain any better or worse? And if it doesn't, down you go. If it doesn't, if it, well, typically what it'll do is it'll make it worse if it's an abdominal cramp. If it's visceral, it might actually relieve it a bit because as the abs contract, your hands are going to come up off the viscera and so it won't be sore on the, you, you won't have the visceral pain. But if it's muscular, she's going to contract it even more and it'll feel even worse. Okay. About the only other thing I would get people to do would be you could check positional if you found that on that gelée test the joint was not moving. You could look at positioning because the ASISs should both be across from each other. You might have one up or down. If the legs, check under the medial malleolus, just check the leg length. One side might be up compared to the down. You'll get them to flip over onto their stomach. I'll get you to flip. And in this position, you could check the PSIS levels and the ischial tuberosities. And then you get an idea, are you know, they like maybe down at the front and up at the back on one side or up at the, or back at the front and down at the back. Like it'll tell you a bit of an idea of which way it might be stuck or turned if you're noticing that it's not moving properly.